Hello, I'm a sophomore currently at Rowan University, and my name is Nicaea, and I am in the art appreciation course, and I was in this course for uh, the duration of the fall 2021 semester, and I did my presentation on Clay's Oldenburg. So, he was originally born in Sweden. He was born in Stockholm in 1929, and his father was a diplomat. And then he and his family, they, they moved to the U.S. And, um, and Norway, and eventually they wound up settling in Chicago in 1936. And then from 1946 to 1950, Oldenburg studied, at, studied art and literature at Yale University, and became a U.S. citizen in December of 1953. He married his wife, uh, Kuzje von Bruggen, in 1977, and they were married for 32 years, and his wife died in 2009. And his wife worked with him on a lot of his art projects uh, through, throughout his, uh, his art career. So he is a pop artist, but not in a traditional sense, and something that will be a reoccurring theme throughout this uh, presentation here is that he, um, like, like, like the first statement says, is that he's a pop artist, but um, he, like most pop artists, um, where they'll do their work in 2D, whereas for him, he does it in 3D. Um, so he uses paper mache, plaster models, soft fabric, etc., and he creates 3D sculptures. and um, And it was a groundbreaking concept uh, for pop artists uh, at the time when he came through with it. And um, an additional part, uh, a key essential part of his work, and uh, something that will be repeated definitely quite a bit throughout the presentation, is the fact that he. He focuses on making soft sculptures of everyday objects, but in a larger scale. So like, for example, in the picture here, you can see this large scale ice cream cone, which is made with soft uh, materials and um, it's a much larger scale than you'd normally expect it to be. So, um, pop art is an art movement that started in the 1950s, and it's one of uh, Oldenburg's main types of art styles. And this art style had, it reached its peak during the 1960s between the U.S. and Britain, and it drew inspirations from different popular commercial uh, type sources. And Oldenburg originally had been a painter, and but then in 1956 when he moved to New York City, he he. Um, he got to see a lot of different sights around himself. Um, and after his move, he took an immense, uh, interest and he felt an immense immersion in, um, seeing the different elements of city street life. Um, he would see different things like store windows, graffiti, advertisements, trash, etc. And, um, seeing, seeing these things kind of struck something with him and inspired him to want to make things like that, but obviously on a much larger scale and out of different materials. So after discovering, discovering the endless possibilities of sculpture making, Oldenburg went from being a, a uh, predominantly a painter to being a full-time sculptor. So the first example of one of his pieces is called Spoon Bridge and Cherry, and this is a piece that he made in honor of his parents. Uh, his mom Mary and his dad William and he had created uh, the spoon part um, several years before he found a good location for it and he was inspired by um, like when he was younger he used to draw spoons on a table a lot um, so eventually he decided to make this full fully blown uh, sculpture piece of uh, a spoon and then um, after, you know, years before trying to decide a location for it, he ends up uh, deciding on the sculpture garden um, because it seemed like uh, a really good fit for uh, the particular piece. And his wife, Van Bruggen, 
was the one who added the cherry part shortly after because it gave the, the piece a little bit more of a playfulness type of feel to it. Um, just the spoon by itself didn't feel like enough to her, so um, adding the cherry just, just g gave the piece a little bit more of this uh, playful and lifelike feel. And once again, uh, Oldenburg, he's a pop artist and he's a sculptor, and this piece really fits um, the type of works he does because, like pre previously mentioned, um, you know, he, he focuses on large scale everyday objects. Um, and the sense of realism in combination with the actual sculpting is what makes it truly one of his uh, unique pieces. Clothespin is another piece. Um, that uh, Oldenburg created in 1976 and this piece once again another example of that um, style of his where he is large scaling an everyday object this time um, this one is in Philly like uh, uh, it seems like after researching that a lot of his pieces are located in Philly and um, this is another example of one of those and um, clothespin it it's an example of him trying to democratize uh, his art through the usage of the large scaling uh, of everyday objects. And he always tries to modernize his pieces as well um, by, by, by giving it that, that unique and robust feel to it. The last example is, uh, it's called Paint Torch. It's also located in Philadelphia. And um, it's another one of his pieces. This piece was created in 2011, uh, once again with the soft materials and things of the sort. Um, and like the name implies, paint torch. Um, it does have a double meaning. On the on the first hand, um, it's obviously a paintbrush, as you can see. Um, you know, here's the base and the connection, and obviously the bristle part. Um, but the other um, meaning behind it, it's, you know, it, it's like a double metaphor, essentially, because um, the torch part shows that it's actually a torch as well as a paintbrush because of, you know, the usage of the color orange here um, and things of the sort. And um, the meaning behind the torch part is the fact that, you know, it was placed in Philly and the fact that it is a torch shows that this the importance and historical significance to the fact that it's um, located in the birthplace of America. You know, the, the torch um, really showing a flame-like symbolism connecting with um, historical America. And once again, the fact that it's a large-scale sculpture of an everyday object implies his style and that he, he really um, was, his theming was completely there within his piece once more. And his influence on pop art, like, you know, previously mentioned uh, a couple of times here and there throughout the presentation, a lot of pop artists traditionally, they work in a two-dimensional sense, in things like billboards, magazines, television, advertising type of things, but Oldenburg's art art was um, very much a breakthrough and it was revolutionary because um, he chose to turn everyday objects in, and into massively sized um, sculptures that were 3D. And at the time it was it was seen as you know kind of unheard of because most pop art was known for being two-dimensional and like the examples just mentioned. Um, and his usage of soft materials allowed for uh, pop art to be able to seep in and, and go through and combine with the sculpture world as a result of, uh, of what he did. And this is the work cited and um, that, that was my presentation on Clay's Oldenburg a pop artist um, who specializes in 3D sculpture work. Thank you for listening. <laughs>